In this tip, we're going to cover managing Hyper-V virtual switches with PowerShell. So to do that, the first thing that I've done here is I've already remoted to my Hyper-V host, and I'm in a PowerShell remoting session. And the only prerequisites for this SNP are really that you have a Hyper-V host. I'm running on Windows Server 2016, but I believe Windows Server 2012 R2 would work the same as well. Once you're in your Hyper-V host, I can then begin running commands from the Hyper-V PowerShell module. So whenever you install the Hyper-V host, the PowerShell module is installed automatically. So the first command that we can use to create a virtual switch is new VM switch. You can see here on line 18 that, that I'm referencing new VM switch and with the name of PowerLab Oops and a switch type of internal. And you can create different switch types so you can do internal, external, or private depending on what your needs are. In this case, I just want the virtual machines to be able to talk to each other inside of my Hyper-V host. So I'll just choose a switch type of internal. To do that, all I need to do is just run this and then it will give you the output of the name, the switch type, and if there is any description on that network adapter interface. So that's all there is to creating a new one. Now let's say that I fat fingered the, the switch name. So in this case, I, I want to name it PowerLab, but I have PowerLab Oops. Well, to do that, I can just simply run the rename VM switch, pass it the name of PowerLab Oops, and the new name of PowerLab2. So I'd like to change it as PowerLab2 for now. So that just allows us to rename it. All right, so we can use get VM switch to get information about it. Um, it outputs just the first few properties here, but if you'd like to get more information about your switch, you can pipe this to, just like you can any PowerShell output, pipe this to select object and use a star here, and then you can see that there's a lot of other information that comes back. So if you need to get any information about a switch, you can pipe that information to select object and then choosing the, the property of star to get all of them. All right, so now that we know that the PowerLab 2 switch is created, to remove it, we simply need to pipe it to remove switch. And I will just do this here. And when I do that, I'm using the force parameter here to not prompt me to remove the switch. So if I would have, it would have prompted me to. So now that the switch is removed, I can run get VM switch again, and then it tells me Hyper-V was enabled to find a virtual switch. So. We have created one, we renamed it, and then we have removed it. So that's not really the, all there is to managing virtual switches. There's a, a, a few different things that you can do, managing it, changing different properties and things, but uh, for the most part, it's a pretty simple process. However, just because I like to do this for every opportunity that I have, I created a handy function here called new lab switch. And all this function does is it first checks to see if that switch that you're providing actually exists or not. If it does not, then it goes ahead and creates it. And if it does, it's just going to say it's already created. So it gives us a little more error handling um, to get the job done. To run this, I would just bring this into my session here. And then let's say that I want to create a new switch called PowerLab, and it's going to be type of internal. So now I can just run this function that I just created. And then now you can see that we have some verbose messages here, creating switch and switch create. So it just created the switch. However, we can then run this again, which is the functionality that you would not have if you would be running the actual Hyper-V PowerShell commandlets. Now you can see I can run this as many times as I want, and it's not going to send us any error. It's just going to say the switch PowerLab has already been created. So it's a, a handy little function to use to create Hyper-V virtual switches. That has been managing Hyper-V virtual switches in PowerShell.